Trudeau has talked about the need for to be, quote, up to date with your jabs. He no longer says two jabs or three jabs. He's got a rolling number that you can never stay current with. I think that although it may be moot today, it may be very real and very live tomorrow. Well, and I'm not even convinced it's moot today. And the reason I say that is um, in the government press release and press conference they held in early June, where they announced that they were suspending the travel mm. vaccine mandate, they used the word, even in the printed press release, they used the word suspend seven times. Mm. And the Minister of Health, Federal Minister of Health, made it clear in his own words at the press conference that he would not hesitate to bring these back in. Hmm. And there's one other thing that's a, a detailed point that's important. It's not like they have to uh, call Parliament into session and have an open debate about whether to bring back in the travel mandates. That's not how this works. It's the Minister of Transportation in his office signing a document. The minister has the authority, they claim, under the Aeronautics Act to do this. Hmm. So... It's not like they have to go through a consultative process, uh, a, um, a process that's intensively democratic and, and deliberative and, 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 and discussion based and public and transparent. The minister could be signing the order to, to reinstate them right now, mm -hmm. right this minute as the listeners are listening to this. And that's all it takes. So uh, those are, there's many reasons why we say, first of all, it's not moot. Um, and there's some other ones, too. There's still elements of these that are in the order that are still in force. For example, the requirement that you be um, to disclose your private personal information about your vaccine status. Mm -hmm. You need to disclose that when you get on an airplane to fly back into the country, because right. if you're not vaccinated, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Right. So there's still elements of the order that are in force. But more importantly, we yeah. emphasize in our written submissions and will tomorrow orally. The Canadians right now are uncertain about where they sit with this government. Mm -hmm. They're uncertain about what the charter really means. They're uncertain about whether they should plan trips, important trips to see family members, to help care for family members and go to funerals and be at family members' uh, bedside when they're dying. And they shouldn't have that uncertainty. We're Canadians. Mobility is one of the most important rights under our charter. It's one that cannot be overridden because people hear about the notwithstanding clause. It doesn't apply to Section 6 mobility rights, just... For, for, for people to be, be aware of that. So uh, this is tremendously important. We've spent all the resources. The legal dollars have been spent. The hard work's mm -hmm. been done. We have a hearing schedule starting October 31st. So tomorrow we're hoping to persuade the court that uh, legally, when you look at the case law and the Supreme Court of Canada's direction on a situation like this, that we check all the boxes mm -hmm. and this case has to go ahead. Mm -hmm. And it's also important, I'll say one more thing, Ezra, because I, I know I'm running long here, but um, the court's brand is in trouble right now. By that, I mean the institution of our court as one of the key elements in our democracy is not in good shape. People's confidence in the courts, I think, is at an all-time low. Are the courts there to be an overseer of government overreach and a protector of people's rights and freedoms, or are they not? So I guess tomorrow we're going to find out. You know, that's a great point. You mentioned that this could be reimposed with the signature of an anonymous bureaucrat in a closed room by himself. Literally could be happening right now. There are not a lot of checks and balances. We haven't had a vigorous opposition. All the normal checks and balances in society have failed. Uh, until most recently, the leader of the opposition himself did not oppose. The media has been a chorus cheering on the government. The you know, anyone who was a dissenter, say a doctor with a different opinion, would be hounded by his college of physicians and surgeons. And the courts, you're so right, their brand is in trouble. Other than the case of Arthur Pavlovsky at the Alberta Court of Appeal, I am unaware of a senior court in a substantive manner striking down any element of an important lockdown provision anywhere in the country. I mean, you tell me if you know of one that, I, that I'm not thinking of. And our Supreme Court itself hasn't even touched the subject. It's been two and a half years. It's like our Supreme Court's been on vacation when we've had the civil liberties bonfire. It really is. There, there's so few checks and balances. If we don't have the right to this trial next month, it really will feel like that the whole thing's an inside job. Agreed. 
I mean, it's it's. I think it's how we define ourselves as Canadians. That's why you saw during the trucker protest, you know, the most common uh, um, reproduced sign was the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Mm. Handmade signs all over the place, mm-hmm. but so many trucks had the charter in their window. They had it uh, pasted or taped to the side door, or they had blow-ups of the charter. Um, and it's because how we define ourselves as Canadians. And, and, you know, look at who my client is. The Honorable Brian Peckford, mm-hmm. former Premier of Newfoundland, mm-hmm. last surviving drafter and signatory of our mm-hmm. Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Mm-hmm. And as you know, because you met him on your program, he's beside himself as to mm-hmm. what's happened to our country and what's happened to it with charters. So um, uh, this is a real, tomorrow's an important day for Canada. You know, I mentioned how so many institutions that normally are a check on power have either been silent or egging on power. The media are amongst the worst. Uh, I I didn't mention the historic, traditional, left-leaning civil liberties associations. When I was a young man, I remember Alan Borvoy of the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. He was a real classical liberal. He was a lefty, but he, he loved freedom. And he was always railing against authority. Um, I liked him. I liked his style. I liked the fact that he felt like a David versus Goliath. And I didn't mind the fact that he was much to my left because I felt like he was a public-spirited man. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association is an example of a group that we really could have used the last two years, but they were sleeping. So there's the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. There's a Democracy Fund. A few cases with the Canadian Constitution Fund, CCF. And I think I've just listed them all. Let me ask you this. Has there been any interveners applying to join your case as a friend of the court? As in, if there's an important constitutional battle, often other groups that feel like they have a stake in it will ask the judge if they can make a submission. Your case cries out for interveners for freedom. Can you tell me, are there any interveners in your case? I I hate to even ask if the Canadian Civil Liberties Association is one of them. No, there's not, and they are not. And obviously... One would expect when you look at some of the other challenges going on, you know, whether it's the uh, judicial review applications in federal court against the invocation of the Emergencies Act, you know, a number of provinces, Alberta and Saskatchewan, for example, initiated or intervened in those. Um, It's remarkable. And I I just I wonder, you know, as to why the most obvious one to me, I mean. The rights of Canadians who have been deprived from traveling across the country to be at the side of a dying loved one or to care from, for a parent or a loved one who's recovering from surgery or cancer treatment, to be at funerals and weddings and other celebratory events that are part of living a fulsome life. Um, those are human rights too. Mm-hmm. And they're not just charter rights. Our charter is supposed to be reflective of human rights. And it seems like the left has hijacked um, the human rights sphere for more abstract identity politics. And uh, but, you know, thank goodness for the Democracy Fund and the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms and Canadians like the Honorable Brian Peckford and the other applicants that we represent and other lawyers are representing. There's four cases that have been brought together that are being heard together uh, tomorrow. And we all have the same goal, which is to have the court rule that that um, depriving Canadians of these rights was a gross mm-hmm. abuse of charter rights. It's interesting, we, we have this viral hashtag going, Ezra, that I'm sure you're well, I know you're well aware of, we all are, about Trudeau must go. Mm-hmm. I've been struck by the number of tweets under that hashtag by people talking about their torment, their the harm they felt, the emotional disturbance they feel from not having to been able to go to family, loved ones, funerals, and uh, being able to go and care for and be at the bedside of a dying loved one. It just, uh, people aren't, you know, that's why they're, they post it. That's why they'll never forget. So we need to make sure the charter is upheld and that the court rules that this was a breach. 
And uh, that's what we intend to do tomorrow to take, allow us to go to the full trial of the case scheduled for October 31st. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix, and in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.